Hello, you are watching the Scooter Blog channel. This is the second episode of the video games in my living room, and today we are going to talk about the Analog Mag SG, which has a FPGA implementation of the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive, depending on your region. It also has core for other power systems, which are Sega Master System, Game Gear, SG1000, and ColecoVision. I already reviewed the Analog Mega G on my blog. You can check the link on the description. So, why did I buy Analog Mega G? To answer that, first, I have to explain that I don't consider myself as a video game collector. I'm rather a player than a collector. I don't buy video game consoles to let them start in their boxes. I buy video game systems to play with them. Of course, I would like to have at least the main systems of each generation, but I don't have the money to buy them, neither the space to keep them all installed and ready to play. So I focus on current systems and the classic systems that I had when I was a kid. The first video game system I had was the Atari 2600, which I talked about in the first video of this series. The second video game system that I had was the Master System. It was a Master System 2 from Tectoy. Master System 2 from Tectoy is based on Sega Master System Model 1 from the United States. Tectoy changed the model number when they released the Master System with the game Alex Kid in Europe World in its memory and dropped the second controller. The first model had Hang On and Safari Hunt on the memory and two controllers were included. My parents gave me my Master System 2 on 1991. Besides Alex Kidd in Miracle World in the memory, it also came with a cartridge. California Games, which was called Jogos de Verão by Tectoy here in Brazil. Jogos de Verão actually translates to Summer Games in English, but I guess I understand the change. Most Brazilians wouldn't understand this California reference. This game was included in the box during a promotional period. The game manual was also included, but not the retail box. Unfortunately, I don't have that master system anymore. It was sold some years later, but some years ago I bought the exact same model with the original box. Both the console and the box are in good shape but not as good as those that I had when I was a kid. My Master System didn't have a single scratch, and the box was just like new. My cartridge label was also perfect, which is very difficult to find these days. The Tectoy Master System doesn't have the RGB output, so unless one wants to mod it, it's not the best system to play Master System on LCD TVs. Therefore, I keep my Master System connected to a CRT television that I have, and I use it mostly to play, to play the Light Phaser games, because the Light Phaser doesn't work on LCD TVs. The Light Phaser watching I had since 1991. This one I kept. It's been with me for the last 28 years. The third video game system that I had was a Sega Genesis, the USA model. Tectoy released the Mega Drive officially in Brazil, and it was pretty much the same as the US Sega Genesis, but with the Japanese name. So, why did I have a Sega Genesis? I guess it was cheaper to acquire an imported Mega Drive from the grey market than to buy them from Tectoy. Most people that I know had a Japanese Mega Drive those days. Some people had the Tectoy model, and mine was an exception. I didn't know anyone else that had a Sega Genesis here. My parents bought it on a video game rental store in 1992. It came with a game included on the box, Sonic the Hedgehog, and it even had a plastic retail box. Unfortunately, I also don't have that Sega Genesis anymore. But some years ago, I found the exact same model for sale on Amazon, with all accessories included and even the box. 
so I bought it and sent it to Brazil using a freight forward service. The console is in very good shape, not a single scratch, looks like new. The included adapters are still sealed. The only missing thing is the Sonic poster. The box is just okay, the one that I had earlier was in better shape anyway. This Sega Genesis was connected to my LCD TV through FrameMeister and OSSC until I got the Mega G. I used it to play both Mega Drive and Master System games. I also have a Mega Drive 3 from Factoid. This is based on the Sega Genesis Model 2 from USA. My parents gave me it in the Christmas of 1993. It came with the Sonic the Hedgehog 2, characters included in the box. The metal was also included, but not the retail box. This was my 50th video game system, and this one I still have after 26 years, with its box in perfect shape and all the included accessories. This Mega Drive 3 was the one connected to my LCD TV until I bought the Sega Genesis. I replaced it because the Sega Genesis, which has a VH6 PCB, sounds better. I wrote an article about how different Mega Drive models have different sound quality. You can check it on my blog. Now, the Mega Drive 3 is also on my CRT TV. So, why bother with Mega SG considering that I already had two original Mega Drive and one original Master System? Well, first, because truly digital HDMI output is still a little better than analog RGB through OSSC. You are avoiding a digital to analog and then back to digital conversion, and all the noise involved in them. I already had the analog Super NT, and I knew what to expect from the Mega G. I know what Kevin Harkon, also known as Catrice, is capable of, so I pre-ordered it. The original Mega Drive also has a problem called jail bars, which are vertical lines that appear near to the middle of the screen depending on the color being displayed. It's imperceptible on CRT TVs and not a big deal even on LCD TVs, but still a little annoying. It's present on all Mega Drive models, though it's more perceptible in some models than others. Some people install mods to fix this problem, but I don't want to mess with my Mega Drive internals. I want to keep them original. Now, let's talk about the audio. All Mega Drive have a low-pass filter by design. Sega probably included them to mask quantization errors and noise introduced by the digital to analog converter. So, our original Mega Drive models sound a little muffled. The Mega G, being totally digital, doesn't have this kind of limitation. The audio is crystal clear, way better than the original Mega Drive. Some people claim that Mega Drive Sound must have a low-pass filter, otherwise it's not a Mega Drive. This filter is included in Mega SG as an option to these people, but I'm not one of them. I'm very happy with the Mega SG Magnificent Audio. My choice of Mega SG model was the USA one, with the white reset button, to match my Sega Genesis. I also liked the Japanese one with the blue button, but the tradition was stronger on me. Analog does not ship to Brazil, so I had to buy my Mega SG through a freight forward service. My choice was Envios Diretos, which is based on California. They do a really good job, no hidden taxes and good customer service. The package weighs less than 4 pounds, so 
so I use the USPS First Class Service to send it to me. First Class is cheaper and less susceptible to custom taxes, which are really high in Brazil. But keep in mind that First Class doesn't have an insurance as an option. The package arrived to me in 12 days and it didn't get custom taxes, which is great. I installed my Mega SD on my living room TV. I connected the HDMI cable to my audio receiver, which is a Yamaha Advantage RX8870. And the receiver is connected to my TV, which is a Sony XBR55X905E. It has a 4K panel. Mega SD output is 1080p but it upscales very nice in this TV. Regarding accessories, I usually use my two 8B Pro and 3D controllers on my Mega G, since they have an exclusive button to access the menu and turbo function. But I also have two joys by Crix, which are also a great choice of wireless Mega Drive controllers. The jailbreak firmware runs the ROMs from the SD card, but I still prefer the Mega Drive X7 so I can use save states. Not to cheat, but to be able to save and continue later. As an adult, I don't have much time to play as I had when I was a child. The same applies to Master System games. I can run them from the SD card or Mega Drive Everdrive X7, but I can only use the save states using the Master Everdrive X7. I never had Game Gear, SG-1000 and ColecoVision, but they are all nice additions and I'm happy that I can play them on my Mega SD. ColecoVision has a great part of Pepper, one of my favorite games on Atari 2600. SG-1000 has a great version of the Hero, which is also one of my favorite games on Atari 2600, so it's always nice to have this system available. Note that the original Mega Drive can run SG-1000 games, because it lacks its video mode. Master System can run them through Master Everdrive, but the colors are a bit wrong, as it uses a different color palette than SG-1000. Mega G runs them perfectly, with both color palettes to choose from. I know some people still prefer the real hardware, and others are just happy with emulators. I won't argue with them. I have no plans to sell my original Sega Genesis, neither my original Mega Drive 3, neither my Master System 2, and I'm happy with free emulators for arcades and systems I never own. But Mega SG is my system of choice to play Mega Drive and Master System games on the LCD TV. Perfect graphics, perfect sound, zero lag. And that's why it's one of the systems in my living room. If you liked this video, please subscribe to my channel. Enable notifications to know when the third episode is available. Thank you for watching.